Oi governor, I'm Jacob Fry, and this is episode 30 of the Emma Island Podcast. I'm joined by my sister, Evie Fry, played by, played by Aries. Go ahead. Okay, um, <laughs> sure, cool, hi. <laughs> <laughs> I'm also joined by our Indian friend, Henry Green, played play by Connor. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> oh god. No, oh god. <laughs> this is we're only 20 seconds in we're already just crashing, you know, f- so far downhill so Why fast. did you do this and, to us? <laughs> and I'm also joined by um 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 uh, uh, Charles Charles Darwin of the, the Royal National Science Society play, played by Lawson. <laughs> Did you know I pioneered the theory of evolution? I did not know that, Jacob. Oh, fuck. No, you're done. <laughs> <Exactly. laughs> Alright, so... It's a bloody yeah, marvellous time to be alive. Life. There we go. <laughs> Alright, this is episode 30 of the podcast. Um, very pleased to be here. Uh, this week we have a very special episode. We're joined by Lawson. Um, who's the behind the scenes team member? He makes a lot of music and stuff. Um, even though he is currently on like a really shitty connection, so if he starts interrupting us randomly, that's more likely the delay that he's on than him being a dick. So, so when I way. was possessed by a demon a month back, um, <laughs> I have exercised the demon, but um, I didn't do the spell properly, so it landed on Lawson. So, mm-hmm. my bad. Mm-hmm. 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 All right. So this week we're, t- we're going to take some. <laughs> <laughs> this week we have some questions for, from the fans uh, from Twitter and from subreddit. Then we also have some various news stories to talk about, most of which involve my work crying a lot. But first, I thought we'd just talk about real quick what we did this week. Last night I watched this movie Equilibrium with Christian Bale, um, and I really enjoyed oh God. it. I really liked it. Have any of you guys seen it before? It's on Netflix. I have not. No. It's, it's I have like, no I've seen its ridiculous trailer. I haven't seen the That's trailer. That's the one with Gunkata, right? Yeah, I, I think so. That. Martial I arts mean, with yeah. shooting? Yeah, yeah. It's really <laughs> cool. <laughs> um, I really like the storyline and stuff. And there was actually this one scene that's like probably just as memorable um, with like the slow motion gunplay as like the Matrix lobby scene, um, which oh, I wow. thought was like really cool. Although it's like, it's like Matrix, but really silly, um, with Christian Bale. So I really liked it, personally. And in a few hours' time, or yesterday, if you're listening to this upon release, I'm going to go see The Martian in the theater. Ooh, my dad said it was really good. Sweet. Cool. I've heard good things. Have any of you guys read the book? I have. Nope. nope. Oh my god, you guys need to read the book. It's so fucking good. It's the alternate ending to Interstellar, right? Y- yeah. Yeah, that's the one. <laughs> Especially if you have... Um, if you think of uh, Mark Watney as Matt Damon, yeah, it just is oh. in the movie. Um, no, I'm, I'm just fucking with you. Don't worry. Um, so that was that, and I finished reading Slaughterhouse Five this week, which I really enjoyed. That uh, fucking book, Kurt Vonnegut. Um, I really enjoyed that book. I actually like. I managed to finagle my way into reading it for class, even though I've wanted to read it for the last few months. Um. Which is sick. I read that so class. I have to I have to read this book by like December twenty first and um and I have to start it by October 9th and I've already started it and finished it. So nice. that's nice. 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 So Classics. I just wanted to know from our listeners and from you guys, what are some good books that I could read? And also, of course, my friend Aris here also needs his um, daily book recommendations because, you know, he's still... I don't read them. I just look at the covers and then put them away on my shelf. Because I, you know, <laughs> we've been over this. I, I'm, I, am, I am illiterate. Just, you just kind of like, your... just kind of like look at the shapes corporate. of the words. Yeah. Sometimes <laughs> I, I just draw things. I, I'm really crappy at coloring inside the lines, especially when the really lines sucked. are so tiny with all That's those really dumb sucked. little characters on the pages. It's really sucks since I know that you have to read... You've had to read The Prince and Rousseau, and you'll probably have to read fucking Candide at some point. And you've been yeah, reading. Yeah, I just kind of flipped through the pages and, and pretended like I was reading. 
paradox. And then I, like you know, looked around both ways and mm-hmm. kind of flipped to the end and yeah. you drew a little dick in the margin and then called it a day. Okay. Realize we have a midterm next week, man. <laughs> yeah, we have to study for that. <laughs> All right. So um, I'm currently keeping a re- uh, running tally of this this reading list um, from suggestions because I already asked on Twitter for suggestions. So there's like a few Vonnegut things. Um, Cash Twenty Two by Joseph Heller. Um, oh. I'm currently reading Moby Dick um, because Mother had that on the shelf and I've wanted to. I've been interested in reading that. And it's the town that he talks about isn't too far from here in Boston. Oh yeah, it's. Um, it's a difficult book. I'm actually really enjoying it. I've only read like the first 10 pages. I'm not sure how much of it I'm going to get through because it's really difficult and really long and like speaking in mostly older phrases. So it can be a little bit difficult to um, keep up with it. And I'm not like, I am pretty good reader since I read quite a bit, but I'm not like experienced in older English. So I'm not sure how much of that I'm going to read, but I'm really enjoying what I have read. And I'm also going to planning on reading this book called Into the River by Ted Dorr, which was in the news recently because it was banned in New Zealand. Um, it's a it's a New Zealand book and it was um, banned in New Zealand for like a month. And like if you had it, then you were fined like fifty thousand dollars or something. Wow. Oh. Um, and it was also and the funny thing is the year before it was banned, it was given this massive um, award by the New Zealand Post. It was given the Children's Book of the Year award. Um, and then a year later it was banned because this conservative Christian family group, quote unquote family group, um, lobbied to ban it because it had sexy stuff in it. Yeah. It's banned Mm. books week right now, isn't it? Oh yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Um, I've read a couple good books lately, but they're not not like the, uh, you know, the classics kind of stuff that you're doing. I I read ready player one. Ironist oh, Klein, and that oh, was yeah, pretty great book. if you're into video games and that's stuff. That's a very fun book. Mm. And I also uh, read, read Snow Red Crash Wars. by Neil Stevenson. Snow oh. Crash. I think I've heard of that before. It's like a it's a cyberpunk sci-fi type of thing. Mm. Kind of like a funnier ne- neuromancer. Funnier neuromancer. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm. Right on. Well, I've been reading The Witcher books. Like I went back oh. and yeah. Try to get into those a bit. Uh, I've also been reading uh, the complete works of H.P. Lovecraft because Bloodborne is very much that direction towards the end. And I've been reading some histories on London, it's dead, and, it, and Venice. Mm. Okay. Yeah. The big chapter in that, the book about London, just about the plague and all the gigantic burial pits there. Hmm. It's rough. Basically, it, it entails. It, it comes down to if you try to build something in London, then you are going to run into an impenetrable pit of bones at some point. Like there are tube lines that are that that go the way they do because they're avoiding these things, these gigantic, just mass graves that they couldn't uh, get through. Hmm. Uh, you guys do anything else this week? I finished Bloodborne. Uh, I started Batman again, and I started Bloodborne again. Nice. I'm not playing any games at the moment. I'm just um, waiting for the f- few big games that came out at the end of the year, like the Nathan Drake collection, because I didn't play the Uncharted games when I had a oh, PS3. I'm so excited for that. Love me some Nathan Drake. And also um, Fallout 4 and things like that coming out at the end of the year. So I'm not playing anything at the moment. I am playing uh, Europa Universalis 4, which is a um, grand strategy game, mm-hmm. um, RTS style game that's um, based historically uh, which I'm really enjoying uh, I definitely recommend if you've into something like that and you should probably check it out I'm really enjoying it I've put like 300 hours in or something like that damn um, anything else before I take us to something else that I want to talk about uh, tonight is actually going to be my homecoming dance so that's pretty hype Ooh, same fun. <laughs> double fun <laughs> yep <laughs> There's a Bernie Sanders rally here tonight. <laughs> what? That's a coincidence. Oh, okay. Um, right. That's the thing. Bernie Sanders is my homecoming date. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. Feel so, the burn. So this is something that I want to talk about real quick. Last week we talked about the inclusion of a transgender character within Syndicate. Now, 
I just want to add to that real quick, and this should only be like a minute discussion max. I don't expect this expand to a full discussion, so don't get scared. But I think I know what they could have done, which would have made me completely fine and avoided this whole debacle altogether. What if they simply did not uh, announce pre-release his inclusion in the game? I yeah. think that, you know, they said, we don't mention his gender at all in the game. Well, you just did before the game was even out. Now, I'll give you an example of a recently game which, uh, recently a game which did that, um, handled it pretty well for the most part, and that would actually be Destiny. Destiny the Taken King, well, one thing they don't tell you at all anywhere in the marketing at all, is that the Taken King is actually transgender. And so that's not only a game with a character who's transgender, but a game with a, that's named after a transgender character. And that's not mentioned in the marketing or anything. They didn't try and use that to draw in more um, attention and things like that. And so that's, I think, why it made me... Like, the crux of the discussion last week was that I think they're going to handle it badly and Aries thinks they're going to handle it well. But I think what made me think they're going to handle it badly is because of how they're handling this announcement. Because it makes it seem like it's diversity for, di for diversity's sake if they're like, look, guys, we have this. We are good. What do you guys there think? Was, there has been some footage of a cutscene with this character, and uh, I really think it's under... I don't think it's handled badly at all. I think it's handled really well. Mm, I haven't seen that, though. So, yeah. yeah. I'm just well, speaking... I'm telling you um, now. Yeah, so. I'm speaking on the description in the article. Um, I think since there is so much pre-release shouting about how you know, racist, sexist, and whatnot Ubisoft is during the Unity pre-release, I think they just want to be like, hey, you guys were concerned that we weren't being inclusive. Look, we are being inclusive. I don't, I don't think there's anything necessarily wrong with that. It's not like, look, we're, we're so great because we're being inclusive. We're going to tell you that we're being inclusive the whole way through. It's just there was one day they said, hey, we have this character. Name's Ned. Transgender. Cool. I don't think they were being like super mm. like you know yeah. flashing lights like oh my god guys look at us it's just no they're just saying it and then it was that and they haven't really mentioned it since then mm. it's just I think you just have to think about why are they saying it? Mm. what are they hoping to gain from saying it i'm i'm of the opinion that diversity is good no matter what motivates it so even if aftermath is totally right and i actually believe that he is and that they did this to drum up publicity and create a discussion with that all being said and that all being probably true i do not think this is bad i cannot cast this decision mm -hmm. in a negative light because diversity is good transgender people need more representation mm -hmm. in media entertainment end of discussion you know mm -hmm. so what i'm thinking is that this is one of those cases where it's not a spoiler but it's definitely something that should have been revealed in the game and not pre-release i would have loved to have to find this out in the game, this would have been such an interesting plot point but that was completely ruined because Ubisoft wanted this extra public publicity. I think. Mm -hmm. Here's one thing: I think um, after AC4, people might spend the whole game expecting this person to suddenly reveal, "Oh my gosh, they're a woman." But mm. uh, mm, I don't know. I feel like maybe the announcement is probably. I it. I think maybe the announcement is probably like, hey guys, look, we did do a thing. But I don't know if their inclusion in the game is that. Like, yeah, I'm fine with the inclusion in the like game if they handle it well, which I think they will. It's just this whole announcement thing, which is not sitting quite right with me. Eh, whatever. All right. We'll see in three weeks. All right, now we have some questions from some fans. They come from both Twitter and the subreddit. Of course, as always, if you want to send us some questions to answer on the show, then you can send them to animesoundpodcast at gmail.com or send them to any of us anywhere where we are. The first question comes from Medina Gaming on the subreddit, and he wants to know, do you make your own luck? And the answer is yes, I do. Aries? Um, to find the answer to that question, you should read Legacy Sequence 4. All right, Connor. <laughs> I outsource my luck making to India. And uh, Lawson. 
Oh, uh, yes. I own three leprechauns, but please keep it down. The police are asking questions. Mm-hmm. Okay. Ocean King wants to know, Evelyn, yes or no? I believe he's referring to a ship between Evie and Evelyn. Um, and I have to say, Evio. Eris? Um, I think Eve Tyre is better, because Evelyn wouldn't work, because Evie would be, like, well... Well, Avalon would... Well, they'd all be dead. But if I had to, to pick a hypothetical couple pairing, it would be Eve Tyre, for sure. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Connor? Uh, I'm going to have to go with... Uh, no on this one, actually. Okay. Okay. Lawson? Nope. Mm. No shipping. This is this is the guy who has Shakeup as his flair, if I remember. <laughs> oh right, Shakeup is not a thing. It's Shaith the Motion King. Come on, um, Lawson. <laughs> so that's no shipping yes. overall. But Evo. Um, I tend to I tend to think that arbitrarily pairing up characters for seemingly no reason is yeah. kind of silly. I mean, I get it's a fun joke, and it's pretty tongue-in-cheek when people say Shatham. I don't think there are that many people who actually want to see Shay and Haytham porking each other. But, <laughs> you know, yourself. Like, any game that, like... <laughs> <laughs> I do think there are, like, Some in-game like, relationships that make sense, but I don't think Evie and Aveline mm. makes mm. sense. None at all. <laughs> what about Evio? Evio is... Evio... One true ship. I don't know. I feel like they could get really creative with their capes, so I'm not, I'm, the jury's still out on that one. All right. Um, Mick Heisenbergler of the Marathon Team fame also has a question for us. This one's a little bit more difficult, a little bit more serious. He asks, what is your guys' least favorite thing that is said over and over again about a C? Such as, as the same as COD, the franchise died with Ezio, etc. What do you guys think? Anything stand Ooh. out to you? Yes. Um, All right, give it to us. Give it to me. So I am so. so I, I've po- I've posited this theory on on a few chats before. Are you familiar with Godwin's law? The idea that after a certain time, any argument on the internet will end up involving Hitler. Ah, uh, yes. I, I think we have an AC equivalent. Uh, I think if a thread of any kind of any topic goes on for a particularly long amount of time, eventually someone will comment about modern day being shit now. Mm. Mm. It happens on every thread. I am so tired of seeing awesome discussion that has nothing to do with modern day. Eventually someone's like, yeah, but before they do that, they need to fix modern day first. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We know. We know it sucks. The dead horse has been beaten so hard that it is now a second level of dead heretofore unknown to man. (laughs) <laughs> yes, I can see that. I have noticed that myself as well. Um, and it's actually all too common. Aries and Connor, anything else stand out to you that uh, we see often? I have an unpopular opinion, but it really oh, no. pisses me off that everyone thinks they have an unpopular opinion. <laughs> and does anyone else think that people ask, does anyone else too much? Because if you ask me in my unpopular opinion, I think that it's really fucking annoying. <laughs> Oh, yes. Actually, I agree with you. That is also my unpopular opinion. Um, everyone Brilliant. asks, does anyone else... Does anyone else get annoyed by people asking, does anyone else, about unpopular opinions? That's my unpopular opinion. It's like six opinion. layers of meta now. <laughs> no. Yeah, Bad. definitely when, when a thread starts with that, it's not a thread that you really want to continue looking at. Because mm. uh, it's usually like... <laughs> you know exactly yeah, where like it is. Stand like, blue. Does anyone else think that... Connor is awesome, and then the entire thread is like, yes, I think Connor's awesome, yes, I think Connor's awesome, mm-hmm. and it's the same way the other direction. Do you think Connor sucks? So yeah, I does, think Connor sucks. Does anyone else think so the answer to every they should question ignore is no. threads that start with, does anyone else? Mm-hmm. I think that that should be a ban cane. Sometimes I wonder if the people who make those, does anyone else threads, only ever looks at YouTube comments and believes that the entire AC fanbase believes exactly what those YouTube comments tell you. Or they believe that Assassin's Creed Confessions is the one true prophet of our Mm. community. Mm. Oh, yes, of course. That too. That too. (laughs) That guy. Yeah. Did you There's several things that he says that just contradict other things he said. It's so dumb. It's hilarious. Right. I don't understand Um, any of that, but okay. My uh, thing is... 
Um, it's kind of a double. It's kind of a twofold thing. It's like when people say, like, um, Assassin's Creed is not X kind of game, or uh, X game is not an Assassin's Creed game. Um, whenever I see something like that, it's like, <laughs> yeah, I'm exactly. So tired of that. Um, and then at the same time, like, I don't know. It's like Assassin's Creed is not a stealth franchise. Well, it wants to be. Who cares? Just like. Uh, no, it's, that's the same thing with AC4. It's like, here's where they did something that was wildly different from uh, everything else. And, you know, it was by them, it had their name on it, and it's they're like, oh, it's not an Assassin's Creed game, because it plays differently from the other Assassin's Creed games. And it's like, do you just, like, want good games to not be associated with Assassin's Creed anymore? Are you that, like, hmm. angry at Assassin's Creed as a whole, or... I don't know. I think, I mean, for me, I think Assassin's Creed is a, for one thing, it's really a parkour game, and they can put whatever fucking gameplay they like alongside that parkour system. I think you can't really please everyone, because with with a game like AC4, you know, there are going to be people who are going to be like, this is too different, I don't like this. But if they stuck to the formula and never made anything that was different, those same people would probably complain that the franchise was getting stale. People are going to complain no matter what. You give them anything to complain about, and they will complain because complaining is easier than not complaining, and it's more satisfying for people. Yeah, Look, look at the combat at systems. When we, were, when we were in the days of like AC3 and AC4, there was so much bitching about how easy the combat was, and there was merit to it. I mean, the combat system was pretty easy. And then in Unity, they were like, all right, we heard your complaints. We made the combat harder. And now everyone's like, does anyone else miss the Kenway combat? I just missed when it was easier because I felt like a badass. Sometimes. And it's just one of those things where people don't like to praise things on the internet. Mm -hmm. I agree. Um, sometimes, like, sometimes within the same day, even, you'll have someone who makes a post saying... This is why Unity sucks. And then a few hours later, you'll have someone who says, this is why Unity is the best game ever, and I don't understand why everyone says that Unity sucks. And in each of those threads, there's like 30 comments agreeing with the person, and one comment disagreeing. And so it seems that people only ever comment just to affirm someone else's opinion. And they don't ever... It. Yeah, exactly. They don't ever, like, disagree with someone. And if they do, they get downvoted, and it's really strange to me how the subreddit like i understand the subreddit is made up of hundreds of thousands of people not the hundreds of thousands tens of thousands of people um that are all have different opinions and things but it's weird how they kind of group together when it suits them and they kind of separate yeah. when it doesn't now we have, we have a question from talking sandwich and he wants to know dank or no dank i think dank aries um i'm gonna agree i'm gonna go with the dank colin uh, I'm gonna third that dankness. All right, Min Lawson. I mean, hell, I can't not fourth the dankness. Rock and roll. Now, this is our last question. Comes directly from Orit Nine, from the subreddit, and he wants to know. This is actually kind of funny, given that we, what we just talked about. And he wants to know what's your least favorite thing about the series. Let's criticize a bit in a good way. Anything stood out to you guys about what you dislike about the series as a whole? I'm thinking... Collectibles. Yep, that actually works. Yeah. Um, I was thinking <clears throat> current marketing strategy is annoying for me. Like, the games the themselves yeah. Yeah. are great, but the marketing is iffy for me. Marketing for Syndicate. Yeah, and they've really... It's been a little bit... Ooh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I hate no Ubisoft's insistence on external services so stuff like you play join the family ac council spin oh, to win all yep. of that bullshit yeah. it's so extraneous and so useless and it actually does detract from my experience during the pre-release hype it pisses me off mm -hmm, mm -hmm. connor anything stand out to you that you dislike uh, the games the well, series the franchise i'm trying not to repeat other people I don't know. Like, I think... Here's what I think. I think they have a really awesome parkour system that they underutilize. And I wish that they mm -hmm. utilized it more. Okay. Um, I don't know. Part of it, that's like... They used to do, like, specific maps for you to do special parkour stuff, and those are gone. But 
don't know. I always feel like there's a lot of things they could do with the parkour that they're not doing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I could see that. Hardcore parkour. One of the strangest pieces of marketing that we've had for Seneca so far is that Ubisoft have made this week a 19th century search engine. Um, mm-hmm, yeah, that's something. Um, overall, we'll explain in a second, but my overall thoughts are very cool and very, very silly. Um, I think it's I'm fun. Not sure. Honestly. Yeah, exactly. I like it, although I'm a little confused by it. So, what yeah, Search Engine you, is, I... it's basically exactly what it sounds like. They're, they made this website where you can go onto it, and there's this ridiculously long animation and incredibly loud noise that makes it seem like you're inside of a factory. And then you type in something. Um, you know, a lot of people don't think it's been too restrictive, but I like went for the old Google trick and Google my name. Um, that didn't come up with anything. Mm-hmm. So yeah. that made me sad. Um, but it, oft- it gives you a lot of suggestions, things like that, and they've really gone all out with this thing. Like, there's news articles, and there's, like, mm-hmm. um, scientific journals and things like that. There's that article on the dildo, which was invented in the Victorian era. What? Um, you didn't see that one? Ah! No, oh, how do I find it? Uh, I didn't think to search dildo when I search, pulled up the search engine. Search dildo. <laughs> My bad. Um, I think it's actually the vibrator. Is anyone surprised that that's what after oh, that search? I did right. not search it. Someone mentioned it on Twitter. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Uh, vibro, the vibro massager in the treat. Of course, it's the treatment of feminine hysteria. That thing. Yeah. I remember learning about. Yeah. That. Dildos have been around for hundreds of years at this point. It's just that the vibrator is brand new thing. Um, yeah. So there's a few things you can search that's for. Anything can be a dildo. You could search for other AC characters, AC locations, and it gives some pretty funny results. You could search for Juno. Um, and it gives some interesting results. I actually kind of really like it, although it confuses me why they did this. Yeah, that was my response is why, like, it's, I guess it's neat, but they really, like, if you pull up the webpage, they really blew their load with the animation on this one. Like, mm. oh my god, it's, it's crazy. Funny. It, it, it's I the kind of thing that happens when it. the developers don't have anything else to do. Uh, yeah, yeah. I can see that happen. What's well, a good explanation of this? <laughs> like, just what? Mm. Were there like five like, guys like, eh, we got a Friday off, let's build a search engine? This would have taken longer than so a Friday. Necessary. This, like, massive. Maybe it was a team building exercise. Yeah, that could make sense. <laughs> yeah. I like if you type in steam power as two words. Mm hmm. Though mm-hmm. I find it also weird that, like, so it's, if you, like, go to a search term that's not there, if you, uh, or if you take some of their suggestions for search terms, then some of those search terms return you error messages, like their suggested ones. Like, you suggested I search this, you silly bitch. <laughs> yeah. I, didn't I trusted you. <laughs> but yeah, there's a ton of stuff on there. It's surprising, actually, um, how much yeah, there is on there. News articles. Warfare and Whitechapel. Mm-hmm. Oh, if you search for, like, Evie Fry, <laughs> then it's like, we don't want to be connected with these dangerous gang leaders, um, and we will not be supplying information on them. Oh, that's clever. Mm-hmm. Here's, a, here's an article. That's clever. London weather. I like that. Sunny weather announced for the weekend. Londoners distraught. <laughs> that's weird. <laughs> I feel like I've been using this the wrong way, because everything I looked up, like, I looked up carriage, I looked up cane, thinking I'll get, like, Victorian results for Victorian things, and it's just like, nah... No, nah, it's no. more like an AC yeah. Universe like, Easter egg machine than Victorian. Yeah. <laughs> and also dildos. What happens if you search Etsy Auditore? Oh, you should try. Um, I cannot try! <laughs> bring up all of the assassins and something interesting in, like, when you search. Um, I don't think there's... I think there's a... Missing Files, a man of taste since he's Italian who could have chosen La Dolce Vita, but who seems to have opted for a darker path. Since then, all trace of him has vanished. And there's, there's results for some of the other assassins as well. Um, like when you search... Search the, the word, Shroud of Eden? If you search for the word... Ha! 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 I searched Altair. <laughs> if, Sorry, yeah. but a virus named Al-Mualim has prevented us reading your query. Perhaps you can try to get rid of this problem. Yeah. Uh, um, if you virus. search, for example, you search for the word poop, then it brings up a picture of Connor. 
Uh, Can't wait. No. Uh, <laughs> no, that was. Uh, no, it wait. doesn't. No. It, T- talking it brings up a meme. Dank. Dank memes. Uh, yeah. Is the meme they dank? Up, uh, meme two danks. It's kind of funny, actually. Something that's Steam Power is two words also brings up a meme. Uh. Let's hey, we know that Ubisoft likes their memes from E3. Yeah, yeah. They had memes in the uh, in the 19th century, right? <laughs> Dang memes. Well, yes, because the word has been around for a long time. Huh. So I think the thing with some of the suggestions yeah, is they want to like... show you some of the suggestions they want to show you their special error terms. Like it suggested volleyball, and it and it told me off for searching a. 20th or 21st century result in a 19th century search engine. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> That's very funny. <laughs> oh, search Google. Google? Yeah. This is like a let's play, an audio <laughs> let's play of us just using the search engine. <laughs> yeah. We're uh, just abusing the search <laughs> engine. <laughs> Google. Let's see for Google. It says you're searching a search engine in a search engine. Uh, you're gonna break the internet, basically. So, guys, now that we've used it extensively no live, internet in the 19th century on the podcast live. Let's what, do it live. What do you guys think about the search engine? I think it's adorable and I love it. <laughs> I'm a little <laughs> confused by it, but I think it's really fun and silly. I st- I still maintain neat, but why? <laughs> Yeah, mm. okay. Lawson? Yeah. Sounds like fun. Wish I could actually use it, but I cannot because I don't have a computer. Mm. There is a mobile version, which I used yeah. uh, a couple days ago. The, the, the animation just I'll freaks out, out my computer and breaks my speakers. Which is I would pull it up again to play with it more, but I don't want my computer to turn on the like jet engine fan it has quite yet. I just want to know if like the Ubisoft web developers have ever heard the term form of a function. And why it's bad because that seems to be a, a running gag with these sites of theirs Let's move you on. mean you don't love the Kessel smooth scrolling that doesn't move in tandem with your scroll wheel mm. but it's so smooth newly announced this week Ubisoft just announced how many times can I say announced in a single sentence let's find out they announced the a, B, and C alternative covers for issue three of the Assassin's Creed comic book, um, focusing on that lady that I forget her name and the Galena something? trials. No, no, Galena's not no. the focus. Damn no. it, Aries. Never mind. <laughs> um, so we have uh, Connor. Could you take us through the covers if you're not too busy with the search engine? <clears throat> Got it. So the first cover we have is cover A for <laughs> issue three, um, and this one is focusing on uh, Tom Stoddard, I believe his name is. Did I remember that right? I think I remember that right. And he looks like he's diving down from the gallows, but it's also inside a building, and he's reaching for an axe. I'm not that sure what's going on in this or cover. He threw, Maybe he yeah. threw the axe. Yeah, yeah, that looks too. Although it looks like he's falling. Like, because you can see the um, this slack on the rope. The assassins so, like to do that. I guess he's like, oh, sh- <laughs> yeah. So maybe he th- he jumped down, <laughs> falling and threw it at the same time, instead of like dropped it and is chasing after it. Oh no, my axe! I think the axe is going to be this character's like signature weapon because one of the artists has a profile picture that. Originally, I did not recognize who or what was going on in this profile picture, but now after seeing this first cover, it's pretty clear that it's the guy and the axe. Mm-hmm. And the other cover, cover B, involves that lady. I forgot her name now. Damn it. Um, She's the modern day assassin, yes? Yeah. Charlotte? Charlotte, that's her name. Charlotte. Does anyone else get an Egyptian vibe? An Egyptian vibe from the cover? Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. From cover B. Yeah, I get Just because the hood looks almost like the a hood, cobra. and she looks like she could be Egyptian. I, I, I suppose I don't, I don't get that from the other um, covers, though. From like the other issues. No, me neither. But me neither. Yeah, I could see that. Just like, in this picture, the point it looks almost cobra-like to me because of the flared hood. Yeah. Hmm. 
I like it. That looks and cool. if you look at the bottom, there's a weird little indent in her hand that, that kind of follows the bow on an assassin's emblem. Mm. And that's a neat little touch. Okay. And then finally we have cover C, which involves both Charlotte and Tom, which I really like. I like that cover. It's nice. Yeah. Although my wallet is crying out in pain violently. Because, as I mentioned last time we discussed this, I have to have all of them. And that means that it's going to hurt a lot. Are you guys going to get all of them? Connor, I know that you wanted to. Um, Are you still thinking that? All right. I never realized that Connor is dead. Connor is killed. That's why he didn't respond earlier. (laughs) Okay. Um, Surprise. (laughs) Um, Aries, Aries, what are you, what, what are you thinking? Have you seen? Um, all I'm the other? certainly not getting all of them. Uh, I will probably get them in some capacity, but I'm not about to go and buy the same comic three times just to get three cover pages. I will. Um, but I'm really hope actually uh, there's five uh, issue of five alternate covers for each. Five. Issue. Fuck that. <laughs> this is why you listen to the old podcast. That's insane. Connor, are you still here? You're back. Okay. Yep. No. no. Um, no. I'm hoping that they release them as kind of prints instead, because there are actually some of them that are, I think, available as prints. So I'm hoping that you know I'll get one, which will probably be cover A, and then I'll get the others as prints. Connor. Connor's when do these start coming out? <laughs> um, October. Let me check. Let me check right now. And this October comic now. is set. In the Salem Witch Trials. Which is funny, yes. given that I'm currently reading The Crucible in my English class, which I really like. Well, I really like that it's currently happening at the same time, not that I like the fucking play, because the play sucks dick. Does anyone remember when I suggested the Salem Witch Trials as a location for the AC game? I do not Combined with, like, a gameplay idea that involved you basically having a bunch of small towns that you had to like basically keep up a cover and get to know every NPC as characters and not like slip what your actual motivations are and you would only assassinate people at night. The one that Schnitzel Sandwich got really mad about Mm -hmm. and started crying because I nerfed parkour. Oh, okay. So, it appears that... The first issue will be released in October, early October, they say, and there will be five to six variant covers for the first issue, and then they'll be followed up monthly. Um, I want to find a specific date. I wonder if Amazon has the covers, because I haven't seen that yet. I don't know what... What are they calling these? They just call Uh, them the Assassin's Assassin's Creed Creed. combo. Assassin's Creed. Mm. Yeah, that'll get it for you. There's no cool subtitle for them, which... I'd imagine that the reason there's no cool subtitle is because they want to do more than one setting. Like, I imagine there's going to be a run of comics pertaining to the Salem Witch Trials, and then eventually, once they've covered all they can about that era, they might switch to something else. I hope so, at least. Mm-hmm. Oh, yep, yeah, okay. It costs... I uh, found it on iTunes... Uh, not iTunes, Amazon, after a lot of finagling. Hey, Connor, good to see you back. Um, mm-hmm. Proper. But it costs $6. And will be available 2015. That's oddly in specific. Thanks, Amazon. Mm-hmm. I love you. Yeah, I mean... Well... Oh, if you can get a subscription through Amazon, I'll do that. That'll be easy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Any other thoughts? But yeah, I'm not, gonna, I'm not going to go for all the color covers. I'm just going to keep up with the story, I think. This week they announced the, well, they didn't announce, they released a trailer for the Complete Visual History book, and it's looking very sexy. I really like the look of it, but I do have an issue, and I just want to know what you guys think about this. This is like, they're calling it the Complete Visual History, and this Mm -hmm. is like the movie series Final Destination, or the game series Final Fantasy, where it's going to become outdated after the next game, and the title won't make sense anymore. Which is my it's only the same issue. thing with, like, the encyclopedias, though. There's a bunch of editions of the encyclopedia because, 
like they released the first one like right before Revelations, and then they had to release another one to cover the stuff in AC3, then to release another one to cover the stuff in whatever, whatever. Yeah, but so. that's not called the complete like encyclopedia of or everything Assassin's Creed ever. <sighs> I think it's just the title. No, it's just the title that I'm annoyed by. I like. I can understand them releasing different agreed. issues, like afterwards. But it's just like you can title it something else. Like Assassin's Creed visual history would give you the same effect without having that complete in there, because that's just simply not true. So, guys, now that you've seen the uh, trailer, what do you think? Do you think it looks sexy? Are you gonna get it? How much does it cost? I need to check. I probably will not get it for a while. Yeah, it's probably gonna be a while just because it's going to be a bunch. I mean, a bunch of dollars. The, yeah, I mean the 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 uh, art books for each game aren't cheap in themselves. So, mm. okay. if this is all of that plus more, I'm not forty dollars. I'm not a big fan oh, okay. of buying art books in general. Like, I love the art stuff, and I, I like to look at it, but I don't want to spend a whole lot of money on it. I think it's essentially a collector's item. Yeah. Okay. So it's. <laughs> One second, uh, Lawson, sorry about that. It's $60, but it's $40 with Amazon Prime. So, uh, mm. it's, the same, <laughs> nice. it's the same price as the game, which is interesting. Damn. <laughs> it is physical hmm. downloadable content. Um, physical loadable content. So, Lord I mean, Ares. I like cheap uh, digital art. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. That makes sense. Here I am. Yes, that's Lord me. Lord Ares, what do you think? Give it to me. Um, I think it's really cool. I like the the art, um, although I do own the encyclopedia, or at least the first and second edition, before I realized I'm going to make myself bankrupt if I keep getting these, so I stopped. <laughs> but I, I think it's cool. Um, I don't know if I'll get it, but it it's something that, like, it's the kind of thing that I probably would get um, because I, I like the art, I like the cool mm-hmm. pictures, nice little descriptions of stuff, but it's also the same kind of thing that I can just look at the pictures online. So, like, but mm-hmm. I, I like it. I like the idea of it. Yeah. I really like to see uh, the expanding upon kind of how they made the game. And especially in the art uh, department kind of area, it kind of really interests me to see how they made the costumes, how they made the design areas, to see concept art and things like that. I really enjoy that kind of mm-hmm. insight into, um, into the game itself. And so I think I'll probably get it, given it's only forty dollars with Prime hashtag Prime Master Race. Um, but I don't think I'll be getting another one because they'll inevitably um, release another one next year. I really like the I'm still going to play handbook. Kind of had that. It had an art section, and I really enjoyed that. I really liked that, and it gave some extra concept up, which we hadn't seen anywhere else before. Um, so I really liked it. I, I really like the the idea of it, although I don't know how expensive it should be. I think that if it's that expensive, it's got to have quite a bit of stuff in it. Mm-hmm. I hope the um, I'll I'll read some reviews, of course, first. Um, I believe Access Stanham has just got their copy of it, so they're reviewing it right now. So we should find out pretty soon if it's worth the um, if there's enough bang for the buck. Another interesting thing that came this week was that an eagle-eyed Twitter user, uh, Pabesco, noticed on um, and pointed out on Twitter that Edward and Connor actually have the same robes, or at least the same shirt. This was then confirmed by Alex Hutchinson and Ashraf Ismail. What do you guys think? Do you like the idea of them like handing down the robes and um, Achilles kind of getting hold of the robes? What's interesting is that Achilles was planning on giving it to his son, Connor, yet... It ended up going to the original owner's grandson. This is this is weird. Um, we could like map out these robes, like you know how they have like timelines for where all the pieces of Eden have gone. We could probably mm-hmm. map out these robes too, from like Duncan Walpole to Eddie to uh, Blank Space to Achilles, then uh, faking it towards uh, Connor Davenport, and then going to Connor Kimler. Mm. What do you guys think? Mm. Do you think? It's, um, do you think it was they originally uh, put a lot of thought into that when they were... Um, they said that was originally... In the original draft of the story, that was going to be stated. Um, 
What do you guys think? I I like the idea. I think it's cool. Um, the picture okay. that shows um, Edward's robes kind of posted on Connor and Connor's robes posted on top of Edward um, does really show you how similar they are because it's kind of hard to tell at a cursory glance. Um, I mean, you know, you got red sash, a bunch of little leather straps across the chest, um, you know, white shirt and blue sides. The actual details on the shirt are different, and that was kind of stopping me at first, but I'm willing to let it slide because I think just in terms of the story reasoning, um, it makes sense. Uh, it's neat. I like the way it kind of works out. Um, nice little, you know, like grandfather, like grandson deal. Mm-hmm. Um, but it, yeah, I'll accept it. I'll take that. It's cool. I like it. Connor, what do you think? What do you think? Um, I think it's like a nice little thing to find out, but I don't think it's that amazing or earth shattering. It's like, mm. oh, that's kind of cool. Yeah. Moving yeah, certainly on not earth shattering. I agree. Um, so I just wanted to bring up and maybe talk to you guys a bit about, like, we could talk a bit about the costume design for, like, all of the games. Um, so, like, starting off with Altair and AC1, we have the system where, as you rank up in the Assassins in um, the Levant in Masyaf, your robes get longer, and which is interesting, and I actually kind of like it as a display of rank. Um... So, guys, what did you think of Altier's long, flowing robes that kind of are the only really ones that can are useful for blending in because he kind of blends in with the monks and the uh, scholars? Uh, what do you guys think? Of, what did you th- guys think of the costume design in AC One? I liked it; it fit really well. AC One was a, mm-hmm. a simple game with a core idea. Altier's robes were very simple with a core idea. If you've got this. Uh, this this beaked hood, red sash, you know, flowy tails. It, it's it's very much um, a good starting point because it's simple. And I'm going to use this word. I know, Sumi iconic is the new seamless. Um, it's like the bare bones of what an assassin's robe should be. You've got the beaked hood, red sash, and some flowy tails, and everything else was a modification of that idea. Mm-hmm. Kind of set the stage, Connor. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, I like. I like that function of it, although once you realize that he also has a dagger strapped to his back and a sword in his head, that makes it a little <laughs> less believable. Just ignore that. Um, I don't know. It, it was a good, solid starting point for the series. It's very much like th- it has all the basic elements of future Assassin's Creed outfits, which is the hood, the sash, the belt, some tails of some kind. Um, and I mean... For a while, it was also red and white was the color that most assassins wore. So, the uniform. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Then we moved on to AC2 with uh, SEO's different costume, and it was more like the more segmented um, uh, t- uh, coattails and the cape, and a bit more intricate to more sign more with the Italian Renaissance. Um, what do you guys think of? Uh, con- uh, no, sorry. Itzio's original AC2 base robes. And by extension, what did you think of his Altier armor? Um, I think the original robes were nice. It's just They felt very Renaissance-oriented. Like mm-hmm. They almost feel like they fit the best into the time period, uh, especially with the, the shoulder cape. Um, I don't know. They, I think they were really... Well done. Um, though, I don't know. They're, they're a little weird because just like with all the outfits we've had since then, the tails are a lot longer and the tails on that one are really short comparatively. So it looks, I don't know, kind of emphasizes maybe his younger, um, that he's a younger guy at that point. Um, more naive, I guess. Uh then, the puffy sleeves bother me. I like the puffy sleeves. Pirate I sleeves. I, I like the sleeves that Brotherhood Ezio has much more than AC2 Ezio has. And I'm looking at the Altair armor for um, Ezio now. And when you see it in the cage in Monterigione, it looks super cool. And it's like, yeah, that armor looks sweet. And then when he, when he puts it on, he's got all this other like wacky, super, like way too poofy black, white, yellow, and red robes, and I just, I didn't like it. It just seemed 
Mm-hmm. Like there was a bunch of stuff strapped together as opposed to one kind of cohesive armor set. So I didn't actually like the Altair armor for Ezio and AC2. Because hmm. it's got three layers of those little, you know, skirt cut out tail things. And it just, it made his legs seem way too tall. Just the proportions mm-hmm. looked wrong. It was an optical illusion that really okay. messed with how you perceive the size One thing of Ezio. I've talked to some people about before is how Altair using the Apple kind of created this expertly styled, um, expertly made armor. And it mm-hmm. just so happens that it fits in perfectly in the Renaissance because of its stylings. Um, and I think mm-hmm. that perhaps actually Altier, because the Apple lets you kind of predict what will happen in the future to an extent. And so I think that perhaps um, he saw forward and saw that the only person who would ever need to use it would be would need it in this kind of style. But also, I saw something, it was, it was either this morning or yesterday, that um, since the armor in the cage only has the armor, not the robes, the theory is that Domenico Editore, Grandpappy Editore, I like to call him, um, made the robes to go along with the armor. So the armor itself was all Tyre's, but they had the robes to kind of fit with it because it really mm. is mostly Ezio's robes, just with a bunch mm-hmm. of extra added faff along with it. Okay. So that's another theory. I like both of them, but um, they are two valid theories. Mm-hmm. Colin, what do you think of um, Altia's armor? Um, uh, I actually kind of appreciated it. I kind of thought it was like um, a nice place to build to, I guess, um, a set of armor that felt a lot more durable and impressive than... Ezio's standard armor. Um, I don't know. I definitely prefer it to some of the special armors we get later, but um, I guess I could see some of Ares' thoughts on it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know. Just like... I, d- I do also like it because it's one It's one of the few armors that actually is definitely worn by Ezio in certain things. Like, Um, Because Brotherhood starts with him wearing that armor. uh, Whereas, like, you never see the armor of Romulus again, or, um, I mean, Ishak Pasha's armor is whatever. It's just there. But. Mm, Okay. Um, And then we have the Brotherhood robes, which are like the AC2 robes, except much more massive and look more constrictive. What did you guys think about those? Those I liked because it was a nice callback to Altair, and it, I think it was a really good blend between the two. It didn't look overly poofy. It was simple. Um, the lines were nice and and mm-hmm. solid. It wasn't like flowy and wacky. It, it just it, it worked. I love that. It thought. looked very good. Um, I think it's to me it's one of the most pleasing to the eye uh, outfits sure. that we have. Um, though on the other hand, it's like I don't understand how you could ever infiltrate anything wearing this, but. Uh, I do think it looks really cool, um, and uh, I can kind of I like see to why it's like say that the it's iconic sleek. Mm. Yeah, yeah, um, or like the colors that you can use with it too, um, that were not in previous or future games. Uh, I don't know. I just really like Roman Stone for one, but which is a nice blue. Yeah, that was good. I like that one. Mm-hmm. I like the the Brotherhood and Revelations color schemes the most. Yeah, yeah. I could see Revelations that. gave you like twenty Revelations or thirty. Beautiful. Oh, it just gave you so many. It had the purple in it. It was a good purple. Yeah, I didn't really like Brotherhoods too much, although I really like it. Like one playing, I think the armor makes it all look too bulky, and um, the armor of Brutus like just amplifies that even more. What do you guys think about how mm-hmm. Brotherhood has become like the iconic Ezio robes? Do, would you prefer it if um, maybe the uh, the iconic robes were AC2s or Revelations? Um, the I mean the I think robes that, that are in AC2, they're Giovanni's robes. They're not Ezio's robes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he wears them, but they were his father's. I believe that Brotherhood's robes are the best ones to feature for the character because the Revelations robes came a lot later 
And he really, that was kind of like after he made a name for himself and after he did all the things that he's known for doing in the lore of the Assassin's Creed universe. So I think the Brotherhood ropes should win. Okay. Uh, yeah, one last I mean, thing about, uh, go ahead. I, I, I think they're probably some of the more iconic robes for him, but I wouldn't mind seeing the others in later games either. Um, I mean, I think they all look pretty nice, and I guess, like, I understand why those ones are the ones that keep showing up, but because they're the ones that keep showing up, I sometimes miss the old ones, the two in Revelations ones. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then, yeah, so then we have the Revelations armor, which we talked a little bit about now, which looks more like a, um, it has that Turkish influence, and it has the more, uh, like, a traveler guy like he's been traveling for the last yep. few years mm -hmm. which I really it's asymmetrical like which I don't know if it bugs yeah. me or I like it but oh, I like it baby, I love it that's something that I needs love, to mention I love Jacob's hood in that how it's asymmetrical <laughs> and then we have yeah. oh um, wait wait real quick before we yep, do that um, okay. I wanted to mention um, what did I want to mention I wanted to mention something now I'm annoyed because I forgot what I wanted to mention it was important you can bring, you can bring um, us back to that if you want oh the Helmspring Draken armor uh, is one of oh, my yeah. favorite armor sets in the entire series. It's just Agreed? cosmetic. Agreed? Um, um, isn't that the stuff that was added in the Leonardo da Vinci disappearance? Yes. I think it was also a pre-order bonus from certain places, but... Also, yes. Mm. Okay. I don't even know what it looks like. Isn't that the darkest it's, stuff? It's, it's dark. Uh, it's very sleek. Um, I like it a lot. I wanted to think that this is what the Brutus armor would have looked like if they didn't strap a bunch of extra fur bullshit onto it. Because yeah. the Brutus armor, when it's kind of in the cage before you pick it up, like the Altair armor, looks really cool. And then they throw a bunch of extra faff onto it and it looks dumb to me. But the Helmspring Draken armor, it looks nice and sleek and cool, but like also nice and intricate and stuff. So yeah, that's my two cents on the Helmspring Draken armor. Mm -hmm. And then we have, then we move on to the Kimway era and we have Connor, who has... I really like Connors, actually. He has that, um, both the native and the patriot influence. Vaguely even though, military. Yeah, even though that doesn't really fit in, like, um, story-wise. It doesn't make much sense why it'd have the patriot influence in his costume. But it does make sense for the game. I actually really like it. Um, I think it fits really well. Have you guys tried his, like, alternate outfits as well? Um, I've tried a few of them. Some of them. I don't really like how on the menu, when you're selecting them, the picture of them is just a crate. You don't get to tell... Um, what it looks like until you put it on. That's Alternate the reason I never are there. bought any outfits in Ace Eastern. There's like one for every major city on the East Coast at the time. So there's like Charleston, Boston, New York, Oh yeah, the, co Lexington. the colors. Oh right. yeah, the, right. the colors. Yeah. yeah, I thought the... Yeah. the ooh, I think it was the Jamestown outfit made it classic white and red, which mm -hmm. was really nice. Oh yeah, I like yeah, yeah. That. I remember that. Mm -hmm. Although I couldn't wear that for too long because I made me feel like a loyalist. <laughs> Um, um, that didn't sit right with me. Yeah, I, I liked know. the colors. There were very few, but they were nice. I liked the I liked the colors that you had. I think they were they boiled them down to a few that looked really cool. Um, but the fact that like it didn't display them in cutscenes and put you back in your basic yeah white and blue kind of bothered me. Mm -hmm. Which is weird because I, I don't, only I don't know I don't know why it works that way because I know that you can be killed in cutscenes like if like. Uh, for instance, like when you save the the farming couple that eventually comes to your homestead, uh, if you save them, like if you if the if a patrol happens upon you, then British soldiers can come in during that cutscene and kill you. So I don't understand why, because you're obviously still the same model and you're still the same thing. So I don't understand why suddenly your your robes change entirely. Wait, Lawson, you're going to say something. Yes, I only realized when Aftermath said the line about how the red ones would make him look like a loyalist. Like, because I always thought that I didn't like how we had this trend of white and red robes and then Connor kind of bucked the trend. Like, I kind of wanted that to continue as being like a staple of the series costume design. And now looking back, I'm glad that it didn't. But... At the time, I had not even realized that probably the reason why they avoided red and part of the reason why that early concept costume that had red wasn't kept is because the red would have had the British association mm -hmm. and he mm -hmm. was fighting with the loyalists. 
Yeah. Never even crossed my mind. I don't even know why. But I'm, I'm glad that they did stop that because I think Arno's outfits and Jacob's outfits and even Edward's would not have looked good with red in them. Yeah. Next we have Edward's, which is actually pretty, from what I've seen, pretty split people are on that. I actually really like it myself, but a lot of people mm-hmm. are the... A lot of other people argue that it looks more like a hodgepodge of different outfits um, and different parts to it than... I don't like it. Like a set, contiguous set of robes. What do you guys think? Edwards, you mean? I do yeah. not like the what, Edwards what I robes. I, I like Edwards robes. Mm-hmm. I think they look very piratey because they are piratey more than assassiny. Mm-hmm. Um, the thing is that it's supposed to be like he takes Duncan Walpole's robes, which are really, uh, which become whatever, but he takes Duncan Walpole's robes and puts some leather armor on it, and then he gets what he has, but if you just put leather armor on Duncan Walpole's robes, you don't get what his final robes end up looking like, which, okay, fine, it's a game, but that always kind of bugged me, because it just, it looks like mostly different stuff, I mean, he's got the shirt, Mm -hmm. yeah, he's got some of the blue, but besides, aside from the tails, it's mostly an entirely different suit. But yeah, I do like it, the feeling though that it's like an outfit with armor on it. Um, yeah, because yeah. because it I, I mean he's yeah he's not like a disciple of the order for most of the game, so he there's no reason for him to wear assassin robes as such. What I did like was the three outfits you could get um, in mm-hmm. AC four, which were kind of modified version of Walpole's robes. So the governor's outfit, the officer's outfit, and the something else. Uh, which are just those but like, like politicians outfit yeah um, I'm trying to google them right now they, I always thought they looked so cool mm-hmm. uh, I wish there was one in yes, white because I think I those are those. really nice robes and I would have liked to yeah. see to see more of them mm-hmm. I love the politicians one because it was green and yellow so and even though it's not the greatest color scheme usually I felt like that color scheme really worked well with just the surrounding areas and the design of the whole whole Mm -hmm. game because it all has this tropical feel to it. And then these robes have like a green tropical feel. So as soon as I can, whenever I'm doing a playthrough of AC4, I buy the politician's robes because they get rid of the parts of Edward's outfit that I don't like, which is specifically the leather armor on his shoulders. It just looks so ugly to me. And I... I can't even have specific descriptions of why. It's just every time I look at him from the back wearing the, that leather armor, I'm like, no. It pisses me off. So, politician is the winner outfit for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, um, I was actually kind of disappointed to find that you couldn't actually wear Walpole's original, ro- original robes um, in the game yeah. after you get rid of them. Yeah. Then we have... Mr. Man himself, Mr. Customized, Mr. Robes are different for every single person. I don't know. What do you guys think? I don't even think it applies. Way more Let's just talk about his default robes. Yeah, it was way more simplistic. Cool. Like, I think I, originally I didn't like it very much because of how simplistic it was. Like, in the E3 footage, um, there's like nothing on his back or anything like that. It actually looks more normal. What do you guys think about mm-hmm. Arnold? I like the normal scene. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. Arnold's, yeah. I feel like he really didn't look like he blended in. He seemed like yeah. he was a part of the crowd. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he just. I mean, he looks a bit more dashing than the rest of the crowd, but it works. I mean, he he doesn't look. I mean, his default color is a nice blue rather than a white. Um, it just makes a bit more sense. I feel like. Um, mm-hmm. Plus, yeah. I do like. We have a long coat rather than robes as well. It's kind of yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. AC Unity definitely started the trend of coats as opposed to robes. Yeah, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah, definitely. Yeah, that actually has two different. And pages we're going to see that. On... <laughs> um, and then we have um, I don't even know what to call him, but we have Jacob, and I really like his default stuff. What about Shay? We we ignore Shave, but I guess we can talk about him. We can talk about how his um how his, how his team black coat is the same as the one that was in AC four, which is um well it's the same looking, even though it's not the actual robes themselves, yeah. uh, which I really like the look of. Which I maintain was the original um 
design for Shay's robes was put in there as a sort of test to see what uh, players responded to. And then they said, oh, the scarf's dumb, get rid of it. So they thought, okay. And I know this is just my crazy conspiracy theory, but I feel like it was a, a sort of sneaky way to test uh, what people think of Shay's robes before they actually showed them off. Mm-hmm. Maybe. But I like them. I really like Shay's robes. Um, yeah. I like the different colors you can get for them. My favorite is the red one you I get from you getting a bunch of collectibles. Um, the white one's cool. I forgot about Just, those. Uh, I like the black and red. I like them all. They're cool. Yeah, I really. I wish he had a hood. Mm. Yeah, I don't yeah. know why it was all over the, the fucking marketing material, even though it was nowhere in the game. It was. It was over the marketing material because the marketing team realized that the hoods is a trademark of the Assassin's Creed franchise. And that people would think it was weird if they saw like a cover or a poster for an Assassin's Creed game and he wasn't wearing a hood. That's the entire reason why. Some of the outfits. But they also knew as well. They also knew that if they didn't give him a if they did give him a hood in the actual game, people would be like, But the Templars don't wear hoods. Why is why is he the only Templar who wears a hood? Mm-hmm. And that would have been true. Does anyone have any thoughts on like what Shay's outfit was as an assassin before he became a Templar? Because I kind of liked it. I thought it was boring, personally. I I didn't find the robes especially interesting. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. I can't really remember them that well. For the they were just kind of there. Which I mean, the main deal is is Templar armor, so that's that's the important stuff to me, at least. Yeah. Yeah. And then we have Mr. Jacob himself, Mr. Hat Fan, Mr. Wears a Hat All the Time, Mr. Loves His Good Hats, Mr. Hat Hat, Hat Hat, that's what his friends call him, Jacob. <laughs> um, what do you guys think about that? What do you guys think about what we've seen so far from Sidica? I really like his asymmetrical hood. I yeah, really I like it. really like it. It's nice. Love it. I love it. I love his outfit. I love the leather. The green floral thing, kind of okay. Why? Yeah, I, I know they fan. wanted like a touch of the rooks design in there, uh, but well, it's also but like I, I wish with, I could, ch- and I wish I could change it. Well, with machine made clothing, you get machine made patterns, so you actually, I mean, I, f- I mean, you know, exact patterns are more of a trend at this point than, uh, mm, yeah, in any other period, so. Yeah, I can see that. It's the color and the pattern, not just the pattern or just the color that I don't like. Yeah. Um, yeah. But other than that, I love color, his outfit. So. And it's probably the only one that I would like wear in real life. Mm. Well, we are so a lot closer modern to history now. Close to yeah. real life. <laughs> yeah. Um, what do you guys think about his customization? I don't think we've seen too much of his customization too, so far. I'm just avoiding looking at it. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so. Yeah. I hate that we've gone back to the outfit setup because we have. There aren't individual pieces that we can put on anymore. It's there just you have seven things. outfits. Hmm. You can I change. I kind of like that because well, I like felt the like... hat maybe or the the hat is belt. Not. Yeah, I think you can change. No, not the hat. I think they can individually change. They each have something like individual things. they can change. Like, uh, I think one of them actually can change the belt. One of them, I mean, Evie can change the. I don't know. But I think you can change your gauntlets and your belt because I saw a pre-order thing yeah. which was get a fancy iron belt. But I like the outfit setup because it's it's like it's playing the game how the developers wanted you to look. So it's everything is crafted to look like a nice cohesive outfit as opposed to Unity where everything was like slapdash, put a bunch of random shit together and call it an outfit and go through Paris. And you can have like Here's- these pieces that just don't match. With the Here's syndicate the outfits, the ones I've seen, they look like they match pretty well and I like that. I'm a big constant. Here's the guy. reason I disagree. Here's the reason I disagree with you, Aries. First of all, like yes, Unity's customization was pretty slapdash, but it's pretty obvious that every single item went with other items in every other category. So it's not like they just created a bunch of random and cohesive items and let you choose from them. It's like oh, they created twelve or so outfits and yeah, then split no up the pieces the so things. that you could mix and match them how you wanted to. But you couldn't unlock so them because they're all because they did what they wanted. It's it's having options that's the important thing. Because, yeah, maybe everyone else thinks your character looks stupid, but if you like how you look, that is all that matters. And there's no multiplayer this time, so no one's going to see your character unless you show them your character. 
and you want them to see what you look like. You have control in Unity over how you want to look, and if you're choosing an outfit that you think looks bad, that's your fault. You can have it be as cohesive or as incohesive as you want. The only thing that is happening by removing that options of customization is just creating less choice for the player to decide how they want to look and how they want to be in this world. Fair enough. I agree. And then we have Evie's outfit. We can see in Evie's outfit we have the blatant um, Renaissance Italy vibe coming from it. We have the Ezio with the cape and the Italian uh, patterns on it. What do you guys think about Evie's outfit from what we've seen so far? I like it. We also know that she has the alternative white and red outfit. Have you guys seen that? Yeah, that one's cool. Mm -hmm. The white and red makes me happy. Because white and red actually fits in this time period. This is one of those where they where you could wear white and red and it doesn't seem out of that that out of place. Mm-hmm. Another thing that came out this week was that the actors Jeremy Irons and Brendan Gleeson will be in the Assassin's Creed movie. Now, I'm a big fan of these two characters. I really like them. Um, not characters, actors. Uh, I really like their work before. <laughs> um, Jeremy Irons, I really enjoyed in, I think it's the Borgias. I always get the two Borgias shows in the yeah. start. But... Yeah, he was in the Borgias. All right. So he was really great. Now, I really love that show, and he was a great Rodrigo. So I'm very interested to see what part he'll play in this. And um, I haven't seen too much of Brendan Gleeson's stuff before. I know that he's in Bruges, or he's in the movie in, in Bruges, Bruges. Um, <laughs> which I haven't seen myself, but I hear is very good um i actually really like a lot of the stuff his his son has been in more recently actually like ex machina Mm -hmm. um have you guys seen much of the much of these guys actors uh works before Uh, and do you think do you guys think this would bode well for the ac movie my first exposure to jeremy Jeremy irons Irons. one time i was watching family guy and peter's like this is worse than jeremy irons cereal and it's jeremy irons eating cereal saying if you are looking for marshmallows there are none only more cardboard. So that was my first exposure to Jeremy Irons, so I thought he was just really boring, but it turns out he's a really good actor. So I am excited for this. I think someone, and I wish I could give a username shout out here, but I unfortunately don't remember. There was, in a thread about it, someone said that Jeremy Irons would make a spot on Giovanni Auditore. And for a second I was like, what? And then I looked and I was like, holy shit, this dude looks like old Giovanni Auditore. Hmm. One thing is, like, there actually was an actor who played Giovanni Auditore, and the reason Giovanni Auditore yes. looks like he does is and he looks like Giovanni. he's based off the actor. Like, yeah, because they used the, his face. Yeah, yes. yeah. he used the actor's face for that character. But Jeremy Irons still totally looks like Giovanni Auditore. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it looks pretty good. I don't think he quite has the nose, but it's close. Mm-hmm. But anyway, point is that they're adding characters midway through. Um, so what does that well, exactly announced- mean if they've already started means filming? It means they're announcing actors. It, it doesn't. I don't think it means anything yeah. about when they became involved. Um, Fair enough. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they yeah, probably cool. announce the actors when they actually come on board for filming. So there are probably like a bunch of scenes that they've shot uh, so far with right, yeah. Fastbender and Cotillar, and now they're going, okay, well, now we need Jeremy Irons on the set for all the stuff that he's got to do, and they're using that. Because people are going to see them filming in public, and they're going to take pictures. They're going to see Jeremy Irons Jeremy Ironsing it up in the movie. Yeah. So they'll preempt that, and they'll just be like, here he is, he's in the movie, what do you guys think? And that way, it's not like some surprise leak when people take pictures of it. Yeah. Yeah, I... In some ways, this bodes well because they're both really great actors, but in a way, this actually raises the stakes. And so if, like, the movie doesn't do well, this is like one of those situations where look at this movie, it had all these great actors and yet it still didn't do well because it's based on a video game, for mm-hmm. example, would probably be the go-to excuse. And so if they do fuck it up, now that we have these uh, many uh, great actors in there, it probably will hurt the series and uh, video game movies worse. But if they well, do well, it's going to do even better. Yeah, I don't know that... I mean, the Mortal Kombat and Super Mario movies were both awful, and so was the Street Fighter movie, but 
the franchises are fine, so I don't know. Uh, I think yeah. in terms of video game movies the, in general, this is really a lot of hinges on, on this because this is a, a huge franchise, one of the biggest. Um, I would say arguably, but no, it's just, Assassin's Creed is one of the biggest franchises in gaming. That's just a fact. And they're really trying to make this one good. So if it is good, it proves that, hey, you can actually do this for real. And if it's bad, I think it proves, okay, you know what? Let's just let video game movies die a, a quick and easy death. So I think a lot of people are going to be looking at how the Assassin's Creed movie turns out. And I really do suspect that mm-hmm. how it's received or just whether or not it's you know, good um, will play a, a huge role in video game movies going forward. I have two things that I believe are true about this. One thing is that when Macbeth comes out, that'll be a really good indicator of what kind of tone and style we can expect expect yep. from the Assassin's Creed movie because it's got the director, Justin Kurzel. It's got the two leads. They're sharing a lot of a lot of elements between these two movies. So if it comes out and it's just not good, we'll know. And if actually I think it has come out is the thing and i think i might be wrong about that please do not quote me on this but i think people have liked it so far i think it's been well reviewed and the other thing is that i think the reason that these video game movies have failed so epically in the past is because they're direct adaptations i mean adapting anything is always hit or miss whether it's a book or a tv show or something foreign any adaptation has a better chance of missing the mark than it has of winning over fans because when you adapt something you there's it's even harder to please everybody because either you stick too close to the source material and the whole thing feels redundant or you stray too far from the source material and the fans feel like they've been betrayed mm-hmm. so yeah the, the fact that this movie exists in the Assassin's Creed universe and shares so many elements, elements not elephants, but elements with the Assassin's Creed universe, while being a completely original story, means that all of that risk is gone. Now all they need to do is tell a good story with the shared elements that they have, and the movie will be a successful story. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. Macbeth, I uh, just checked its Wikipedia page. It was shown at Cannes Music Festival, uh, not Music Festival, f- Film Festival and, uh, a few months ago now, and it came out yesterday in the UK, and it's out oh. um, at the, in December in the US. Okay. So that should tell you. And so, yeah, I think I did hear good things about it, but um, not too much of the stuff is in yet. Are you guys going to go, what do you, are you guys going to go see Macbeth when it's out in the US? Oh, hell yeah. Macbeth yeah. is one of my favorite Shakespeare plays. Yeah, sure. Um, and, yeah, I you, you might. have to report back. <laughs> Holy shit, a 90% from Rotten Tomatoes. Yeah. That's good. Now I have some questions for Lawson and Ares, who obviously have, uh, who wrote the AC Legacies short fan story if you haven't listened to our initial uh, interview with these two then you should definitely go check it out um does anyone remember what episode that was where we talked to you two about ac legacies <laughs> when it was released yeah, no. um it was it, i want to say in the like 20s 21, range 21 because that was the week that i i was in montreal I'll check so right now. probably like 21 um in the winter. Da, 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 I was just about to do that. Come on, aftermath. I can't do this all day. Da, 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 da. <laughs> That's all you get. Um. <laughs> Demo, please. Twenty-two. It was twenty-two. Um, it was 32? Good. We were so off. 22. 22. We're not 232 yet. This is 30. <laughs> this is 30. <laughs> it's, we're so far off it hasn't even happened. <laughs> Holy shit. Guys, I need to tell you this. I am a time traveler. Okay, so that I was... I went to the future and recorded. <laughs> so we featured these two talking about AC Legacies when the first chapter came out on episode 22 where we were joined with Assassin M so you should go listen to that if you haven't yet I actually really enjoyed the episode so you should all that was all... a fun one I like that one a lot mm-hmm. um, I actually enjoy every episode so you should listen to every episode we have some questions here now 
from um, from some fans from Twitter and from the subreddit. But first, guys, what you re-released Legacies? What? What's that about? Could so you explain that to me? We All right, originally so- had it coming out in parts. So it was part one, part two, part three, part four, part five. And we listened to all their responses, and their response was, I guess, but why are they all there? So the biggest thing we did <laughs> was we put a reason for everything to be you know, there. So we added, um, I would call it a MacGuffin, but it's not because it's actually really important and there's more stuff outside of just legacies. But the short of it is um, we added an artifact that they're all after, and that um, is a better catalyst to bring them all together. And what that means is that sequence one, which was regarded as very boring, and we agree, was almost entirely rewritten. Um, So we added a bunch of scenes, cut out parts of other scenes that were otherwise extraneous, rewrote dialogue all over the place, and and sequence one was that. It also means we got to add an epilogue, which I really liked, because I spent four hours writing this one speech. (laughs) So (laughs) The epilogue is easily the biggest reason to actually go back and read this, even if you read the original one we released. Because I know a lot of you who read the original are probably thinking, okay, well, why do I want to read this again? That is why. Because the epilogue, we freaking poured our heart and soul into that epilogue, and we want you to read it. Would you so please do so? If the epilogue is the highlight, would you suggest that they just read that, or do you? Is there enough no. changes in the story itself? Would you suggest that they read through the entire thing again? Um, there's, there's enough there's changes that you different. should read through the whole thing again. We've added entire scenes. It's eighty percent larger. Dialogue. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. It's eighty percent larger. Eighty percent larger. Holy what crap! Was there is, the is probably eighty percent rewritten. <laughs> Holy crap! That's massive. Okay. Now, we have some questions here from some fans who want to know. Katie, aka the Cliffhangers on Twitter, wants to know, how did you two split up the writing? Okay, so I'll I'll take this one. Uh, We basically, it was so natural and so smooth. We will get on Skype and we will get on Google Drive. We'll open the doc where we're editing together. And whoever has the idea first, like say, I'm thinking, okay, well, let's have this start us off for this chapter. Uh, I would start writing at that point, and every sentence or so, Aries would come in behind me and start editing stuff, tweaking the language, making it flow better. If there's quotes or stories being, uh, if there's like dialogue being written, we often kind of both had characters that we had various strengths in. Connor was pretty easy for both of us to write because it's he's not very difficult to nail because he's got such a distinct quality to him, and. He was a lot better with the Shea dialogue, so most of the Shea dialogue he wrote, and I probably wrote most of the Arno dialogue. And uh, as far as all the stuff that's just narration and not dialogue at all, it's definitely a 50-50 split, 100%. And still, even in terms of that, the way I like to think about it is whoever was you know writing was throwing a bunch of you know clay onto a table, and whoever was back editing was kind of chopping stuff away and fixing things. So it really is a, a great synthesis of um, all of the things we're saying. So if you look at legacies, um, even I, I don't think Lawson either, could tell you, oh, I wrote that sentence, or oh, Gregory wrote that sentence. It's just there's, you know, our both of our voices kind of pushing towards each other, and then we have this one other thing. It's such a... It's such a mix, and both of our hands were in every sentence that I, mm-hmm. I think it really it, it, it is a good blend. And mm-hmm. we had several arguments. Uh, I wouldn't call them arguments, but uh, discussions over um, very, very specific words. Like um, I'm trying to think of some <laughs> where we'd be on. You know, we'd be on a word for a good five minutes, and should it be this word or should it be this word instead? Um, like, I'm, oh, let me pull up an let me pull up an example. But um, we. We disagree a lot is the thing. And I think Which that's actually what makes us a good writing team. Because when you have a like a real tour de force like creative team, like say, you know, this was a criticism that was lofted a lot at like Tim Burton and Johnny Depp because they released a string of movies where they liked each other so much and they had gotten so high off of the critical acclaim for their previous collaborations that they basically just became yes men for each other. And no matter how bad the idea was, the other person would agree with it because it seemed like the thing to do but uh we disagree a lot and i think that helps a lot okay mm. so katie will also like to know how did you appreciate uh, how did you approach 
the rewriting. And I'd also like to know how did the feedback you received and how did the feedback you received from especially the beta readers um, play into that rewriting? So it's kind of like this. When we posted our, when we were finished with the first run, the first five sequences, the ones that we put up originally, we felt very satisfied with what we had written. We felt this is good. This is the story we want to tell. This is how it works. And we posted the first sequence, and uh, the response to the first sequence was more negative than it was positive. And we were reading a lot of these responses from people who were all very helpful. Uh, with their feedback, and uh, I'm going to shout out like Negative Crooked Charlatan reason. and Abelzerus Prime. Abelzerus Prime actually suggested the idea that we use a, 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 a an object artifact to motivate combining the characters, and that ended up being the biggest, most important change that we made in the entire story, because as soon as we read it, we were like, fuck, why didn't so, we think of this? So that one change was basically what helped us fix everything else. Because there are so many problems that could be traced back to we're missing you know, this one thread that's going through it. So when we put in that thread, we were able to tie in yeah. so many things together you know, in a much better, cleaner way. Uh, we were able to add a character that I, I quite enjoyed. Her name is Etienne. Um, she reminded me a lot of Harley Quinn when we were writing her dialogue, but she shows up in one <laughs> scene. Uh, that's, that's a fun encounter. Um, but a lot of it, you know, the sequence one rewrite and the addition of the epilogue, both came from this edition of an object they're all after. So, so much of the rewriting really came down to adding this one thing. And it seems like, you know, what can one little object do, but it, it really did change everything. Let me just add this. I don't think that was responsible for every single change because there were a lot of smaller things that we fixed. Probably easily 15 little problems that we tweaked that had nothing to do with the addition of the artifacts at all. Um, one of the biggest things that had me face palming throughout the first sequence was that uh, we included the character Miriam. Oh God. And oh, uh, no. not only did we completely fail at her characterization and portray her as basically the opposite of who she actually was, we also misspelled her fucking name. <laughs> Which was, was bad. I, that was terrible. I felt awful about it, and we—that was one of the—that was the first thing we did was we cut that out. Yeah. So stuff like that, where it's like clearly this is wrong. We, we, we got rid of those. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when I first interviewed you two, I asked you if we can expect a sequel or any future uh, AC-focused stories from you two. Well, now Katie would like to know. Are you going to continue writing Assassin's Creed things in the future? Uh, yes. Yes, but, big but, um, Legacies is a self-contained story, so that entire arc is done, and you will see how very done it is uh, when you, you know, read all the epilogue stuff. It, it, it finishes it quite well. Um, and even if you read the, the original version, you can tell it's, it's pretty much finished. Uh, we have another idea for a story. I won't talk about what it is, um, but it is new. Uh, it's not based on any characters you know. Um, and the issue is we would start writing it right now if it not be that we are both in school. So that's a bit of an obstacle, but um, the idea exists and we'll probably do it at some point. <laughs> the, uh, we, we opened a lot of doors for sequel stuff. And, and this is something we mentioned in our first interview about this. You know, there's a lot of stuff that happens with mentioning Essiosa. And my original plan was, well, we should write a follow-up story that has Connor training Essiosa and potentially even returns to Arno training Leon. And when we wrote the epilogue, we realized more than ever that we did not want to change anything about these character stories. We just wanted the leave them alone. And the other thing about it is like when I came up with the idea to write legacies and I messaged Greg about it the first time, it was an idea that made us really excited. It was the kind of thing that we ourselves wanted to read as much as anybody else. And it had a concept behind it that we both felt very passionately about and we wanted to do it. And when I thought about the idea of writing a story with Essiosa as a main character or involved at all, I didn't get the same tinglys. I didn't get the same I need to tell this story feeling that Legacies gave us. And so we pretty much decided that we wanted to do something 
um, different. And so all I will say about what we have planned for the future is that in its current form, it does not involve any established characters, locations, or anything, really. It's a completely original story. Mm-hmm. Now, there's this one thing I wanted to mention before we continue all the questions, and that is um, our good friends over at AC Universe actually made you guys a trailer. Could you tell us a bit about that and how that works? Yes. Uh, this was one of the nicest things that anyone's ever done for us. Um, because when we originally released, I think we were only like through sequence three of releasing it originally, AC Universe sent us a message saying, guys, this is so cool. You know, I love it. Um, if you guys would you know, want me to make you a trailer, you know, I'd, I'd totally do it. I'm really jazzed by this project. I think it's awesome. And I was thinking, wait, pff, what? <laughs> you can't be serious. This guy's got 100,000 subscribers, makes unbelievably awesome tribute videos, and he wants to make us a trailer. Well, this isn't real. Mm-hmm. And I told Lawson, he was like, that's really cool. And we kind of sat on it for a while because, you know, Legacies wasn't done yet. Um, and we thought, okay, we'll, we'll save it for the final version. So after we'd released part five um, and after Lawson and I had both uh, moved into our new abodes and gotten started with school, we're like, hey, ACU, um, uh, we're going to take you up on that offer. Uh, and then we talked about what we wanted to do. He was so unbelievably helpful um, going back and forth on ideas, you know, what works, uh, what doesn't, what we wanted to include. We basically wanted to make it run like a tribute because sort of the the way that AC Legacies is, is it basically is sort of a tribute to these characters that we, we so adore. So um, he whipped up the video in, a, which was or maybe even less than a week, but it was unbelievably fast. Um, like the second day after we you know, talked about what we actually wanted to do, he was like, here, I got the first minute and 44 seconds. It's like, what? No, you don't. That's way yeah. too fast. That guy must yeah. have like every single cinematic from every AC game on oh file. Oh my god, he ha- he must have a file because he he did so many cool things. Like there's one scene, or the, not a scene, but one little sequence where it's all three of them throwing their hoods up. Um, one little sequence where um, they're both kind of jumping down on things. Uh, Arno and or uh, Connor and uh, Shay both are kind of jumping down and assassinating someone. It's it, it's so I... good, and he made it for us because he wanted to because he's nice. Like, that, that doesn't happen in real life. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite things about the trailer were the scenes that were, while they were totally ripped from the games, they looked to me like they were scenes in our story. Because uh, Ace Universe was really creative in that he used footage where he put on, the like, Connor and Shay's costumes in in Unity and film footage there, there's a scene where you actually see Connor talking to Sophie Trinet in the council room. There's a scene where Connor barrels through a window and kicks someone out of it, and that literally happens in sequence five of our story, and it looks in the trailer exactly how we wrote it in the story. There's also a great little scene at the very end um, with uh, Shay standing in front of the Cafe Teatro, um, and he's got a rifle uh, he had the rifle equipped on his back because Shay has the air rifle in Rogue, which was a little detail that I was like, oh, that's so cool. But it's <laughs> so, so unbelievably well done. And just because he felt like doing it, which, again, fantastic. And also a, a, a huge shout out to McHeisenbergler, who did um, almost all yes, of our graphic design work throughout too. the whole thing. Um, really great. I uh, made the thumbnail for the AC uh, Universe video, um, made the cover page. Uh, all sorts of other stuff along. Did the logo, which was a combination of the Rogue, Unity, and AC3 uh, emblems, which was great. Uh, just both of those guys were so, so unbelievably helpful to us, and we really appreciated that all the way through. Mm. And now we have a question from Zara, who wants to know, was this your first time running together? Yep. <laughs> yes. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, that's a good question. Any, uh, don't want to expand on that? Um, it was... Say again? It's just our first time writing together. I mean, that's. Was it difficult um, to get used to diff- uh, each other's styles? Do you have similar styles in writing? Um, we have very different styles. Uh, we I'd have pretty similar styles individually. Did did Aries, those, those you are different just, answers? Did you just say you have very different styles? And Lawson said you have very similar styles. So let me let me qualify <laughs> that by saying, on our own, if you read something that was just mine and something that was yeah. just Lawson's, um, you would think, wow, those two are very different. The reason Lawson yeah. says they're similar is because they go together very well. So there's some things that I uh, mm-hmm. that I like to do a certain way, something that Lawson likes to do a certain way that happen to work very well in tandem. So I guess 
the, we were answering mm-hmm. different questions, Lawson and I. Individually, our styles are very different. Yes. But in terms of how they work, our styles are very similar. Mm-hmm. So let me, uh, yeah. let me um, amend my yeah, original that's a answer. Perfect spot on explanation of my thought process there. So, yes. Okay. Now, we have a question from Crook and Charlison who wants to know Is there any fan fiction you've read that you would recommend to others? Uh, yes. So I, don't, I haven't read a lot of um, fanfic around uh, AC. Um, although I know there are some novelizations out there which are apparently quite good. Um, I'm a huge fan of Reddit user I Don't Want to Believe's NPC stories. Uh, he has one for each game. There's one for the assassination of William de Montferrat. There's an Evening Atop the Duomo. Uh, I Work in the Dark. The Old Man. The Demon of the Frontier. And The Ghost in the Rigging. And they are all fantastic little, you know, a good like four or five minute read, if that, um, that just tells it from the perspective of an NPC. And in the case of an evening, an evening atop the Duomo, it's you know this guy who basically is just kind of there doing his thing on the Duomo, and then Ezio just kind of shows up, and and it's it's so cool because you get to see what it's like for someone to experience running into the assassin, which is something we don't really think about when we play as their perspective, but I really liked it because they're very succinct, um, you know, their own little self-contained stories that give a really neat. Um, perspective and they're they're very well written. Uh, Lost in any ones that you've read that you particularly liked. This is going to sound awful. I haven't even read a single piece of Assassin's Creed fan fiction in my life. I should probably remedy that immediately. And I do want to check out the ones that you just mentioned, the NPC stories. And Crook and Charlatan mentioned some uh, novelizations of the game, and I do want to check those out. Um, but I literally never read any Assassin's Creed fan fiction. I've read fan fiction from other franchises, uh, but never Assassin's Creed. That's something that I will fix as soon as possible. Okay. Now, last question coming directly from Talking Sandwich. He wants to know, how do you manage to make legacies even so danker yep. than it already was? <laughs> um, Lawson, you want to take this one? <laughs> Yeah, I honestly just think that, you know, we had a really solid concept behind it from the very beginning, and it was just polishing the execution that made it more dank. And also, if than if you transpose um, the heading of each of the, the six chapters, um, if you rearrange the letters, take some out and add some new ones in, it spells dank. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what yeah it does. You can even make it spell dank memes. If you, if you add, add more, and more letters, letters to that. Yeah. the web of lies goes pretty far. You just listened to episode 30 of the Dennis Island podcast. I'm Mark Math. That's Evie. That's Henry. And that's Charles Darwin. Say hello, guys. Oh, Say oh, bye, guys. Sake. <laughs> hello! Rob <Goodbye>. Shite. <laughs> um. Okay. So make sure you go check out AC Legacies. Guys, where can they find AC Legacies? Um, you can find it um, uh, on the subreddit. If you look up AC Legacies, you'll find one of about 20 posts about it. Um, the final version is a PDF on uh, Mediafire and a uh, EPUB, also Mediafire. Um, probably the easiest way to do it is go to AC Universe's YouTube channel and just type in Legacies, and it's um, it'll be there. Or just go to his you know, recently published videos, and you'll find it there. Mm-hmm. Um, you should that's... also find it in the very description of this video that you're watching Surprise. right now. All right, I'll um, I'll, I'll edit that right now. Right, uh, and Don't get your timestamps either. I always do the timestamps. Um, we used to argue about it though. Lawson, where can everyone find you, and where can everyone find <laughs> your music, which you, funnily enough, make for us? Yes, you can find my music at soundcloud.com slash shock atlas you can also find some of the older tunes that you have been using on the podcast lately at lawsonsmeads.bandcamp.com i'm on the subreddit as lws rocks and on twitter as lws rocks so look me up and let's have a chat all right so this has been episode 30 we will see you all next week if you want to contact us send us questions or want to be a guest then you can Talk to us at animusislandpodcast at gmail.com. We're all on Twitter, um, so you can all find us there, which is fun. Uh, make sure you go check out the subreddit for a discussion post about this episode, which is 
Assassin's Creed.reddit.com or reddit.com slash r slash Assassin's Creed. We will see you all next week. <laughs>